So let's talk for a second about safety. We know there are about a quarter million preventable deaths in the United States from medical errors and other problems. We've taken on a zero harm initiative with its philosophy that has come from the nuclear power industry. Currently, we've trained 99% of our leaders just in the last couple of years, and 28,000 of our caregivers have been trained. We've seen an uptick in reporting of problems, and this is a good thing. This is a culture of safety of almost 26%, and we've had a decline in serious safety events of 30%. This is outstanding work, but this is work that is never done. On that front, I'd like to share a metric with you that we're not very good at. So compared to other major systems, we actually look okay. This is a, this is a condition called a catheter-associated bloodstream infection. So these are IVs that go into big veins, and they can get infected, and they can hurt and even kill patients. Currently, we're in about the 35th percentile to 40th percentile nationally. That's not where we want to be, and that's not where we will be next year. I want you to know that we know that healthcare is always aspirational. There are many areas that were quite good. So when you look at readmission rates to the hospital, Intermountain Medical Center, where you're sitting right now, sits in the 99th percentile nationally. It's a very good thing. About 30 years ago, we began to recognize that reduction in variability, concentration of volume, leads to better outcomes for patients and is often more affordable. These 10 clinical programs have grown up around those philosophies. So our cardiovascular clinical program was the first program that was formed. It was formed in 1997. When you take care of a person who's having a heart attack, the time that it takes to open up the coronary artery that's blocked often determines how well patients are going to do. The benchmark time is around 90 minutes. What we've done at Intermountain is using our transport system and using concentration of volume and lots of expertise is to achieve something that no other system in the United States has. So we've achieved 99.8% of heart attack victims on the Wasatch Front have had their coronary artery opened within that time frame. And that includes a lot of people who actually are flown to our hospitals here, with the time clock starting from the time they arrive in, the, in that outlying emergency department. This is an extraordinary achievement of leadership and clinical skill, and I'm very grateful to the caregivers who's made that possible for our patients. When a person's having a stroke, time is brain. And the, what we try and do is provide a patient with a clot busting drug as quickly as possible with the national benchmark of 60 minutes. When you look across our entire system of 22 hospitals, frontier, rural, secondary hospitals, and quaternary medical centers, we do that in 61 minutes all the way across the system in 35 minutes here at this particular facility. What I particularly like is that Intermountain Medical Center is the only Joint Commission Certified Comprehensive Stroke Center in Utah. And we're using telehealth to bring that expertise to our entire system and beyond. So it doesn't matter if you're in an itty-bitty hospital in a rural area or in a big urban medical center, everyone gets the same care. And that's really an innovation and something to be quite proud of. We know that mental health plays a big role in the overall health of a population. And there's a program here that embeds mental health professionals in our primary care clinics. This has been extraordinarily successful. For, a, for an investment of $22 per person per year, we save about $115. So it's a very rational thing that only payer providers can make that kind of investment. More importantly, people stay out of the hospital, they stay out of their doctor's offices, they spend more time at work, they're healthier. This innovation was recognized last week with the winning of the 2017 Hearst Health Award, beating out the American Heart Association and Stanford for recognition for a project that really changes population health. Again, very proud of the innovation that has come out of our clinical programs in service of others. I've noticed we make a lot of babies in Utah. 
And in fact, we have about 31,000 births a year in the Intermountain system. 60% of Utah births, actually, we're lucky to have in our facilities. What we've started to do is actually do teleneonatology, where high-risk deliveries can be attended by neonatologists via video, directing the resuscitation of the baby, and then evaluation of potential transports can occur to make sure that only the babies that need to leave their families and their communities actually leave. We've been able to avert about 55 transports in the last couple of years. Not a giant number unless you're one of those 55 families who was able to keep their baby close to home. We are a research organization and have about 1,500 studies that are open, but we're not a university. Our research is largely focused around care delivery, which is what we think we're really, um, we're really distinctive at. We have about 400 studies that are published annually, and we seek to improve that on an annual basis.